hey, explain this tweet thread here from Nina Turner. Just keep the show going. Like, I'm not even here. Yeah. It's the show, Chuck Solo. Chuck Solo. Chuck Solo. Mm-hmm. All right. So Nina Turner tweeted this statement. They, they said, only free competitive markets can provide these things in a high quality, affordable manner with good service. The greater the government interference, the worst overall combo of quality, service, and price. Uh, and that was in response to her saying, everyone deserves the dignity of living of a living wage, safe housing, and health care. Everyone deserves. She quote tweets this and says, free markets always become non-competitive. They made a board game about this. And she's referring to monopoly. I really like that. Her her evidence for how free markets always become non-competitive is a board game called oh, Monopoly. Yes, <laughs> like that's that's exactly what her economic theory is <laughs> coming from is the fact that there is a board game that has mm-hmm. a fixed amount of spaces on it and a set amount of rules called Monopoly, and that is Nina Turner's understanding of free market <laughs> economics. Yep. That's fantastic. Nope. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Although I thought about, I knew she was talking about Monopoly. Yeah. Um, and by the way, you guys know the only way a Monopoly can actually exist is if they have the assistance of someone who has the authority uh, and free range use of violence against other people with no consequences. Mm-hmm. So the only way that you can compel people to not start a business against you is if you have other people that either make it really difficult or actually tell you no, you can't. But when you look at the early 1900s or the late 1800s, and people will point to what the uh, Vanderbilt and Rockefeller, Rockefeller. Carnegie, all, all of these people, and they'll say, well, that's what happens when we have a totally unregulated free market. But if you actually go back and you look at what was going on during those times, they were heavily using the government to restrict people that wanted to compete with them. They were some of the first people that were using the government to hold out their competition. And so even those monopolies, basically, that they had were still aided by government regulations and government power and control. I have a hard time thinking of an actual monopoly that has developed without using government coercion to restrict their competition. If you're not using government coercion, you can't have the monopoly for long because competition will come into the market. If you're going to raise your prices up, well, you're going to entice competitors to come in. Like if you're price gouging, you're charging too high a price or it's it, your margins are way too fat. Well, someone else can come in and charge lower margins and still make good money. And that's actually what happened in the late 1800s and early 1900s as, as well. There was, there's like no evidence of this idea that people are going to come in and destroy all their competition and then jack up their prices. Like Walmart gets blamed for putting people out of business, but it's just because they keep their prices really low. They never tell me the Walmarts that have gone and jacked up their prices by 300% now that all the mom and pop shops went out of business. Or the Walmart cops show up to the mom and pop stores and like force <laughs> yeah. them out like they're the mafia. You know? But Nina Turner's argument is that there is a board game called Monopoly. That and proves. that's why we have to have government regulations. You mentioned racism. I don't know how racist. You thought you were, Charlie, but you're much more racist than you thought you were. Yeah. Okay. According to PETA, that's not, that's not a family guy way of saying yeah. Peter. I'm uh, PETA, the animal organization. Well, I know. read white fragility and I knew that I was the problem. Mm-hmm. The me, the problem rested on me. Yeah. And after that, but even the that, that even, is racist. That's not enough. No, that's not enough. There's more to it. So from PETA, cow's milk has long been a symbol used by white supremacists. One more reason to ditch dairy. No, the title. (laughs) And what does drinking milk have to do with white supremacy, you might ask? (laughs) Well, let me tell you. 
This There's another by, article titled too. <laughs> this is by Zachary Tolliver. Why cow's milk is the perfect drink for white supremacists. As when Christopher Waltz's character in Inglorious Bastards drinks a glass of milk and a character in a pivotal scene of Get Out sips the cow secretion. So we're basing our evidence off movies. Movies. Fake <laughs> movies. Okay. Dairy milk has long been embraced as a symbol <laughs> of white because, supremacy. Because a fake Nazi in a movie drink, drink milk. <laughs> it's long been embraced as a symbol yeah. of white supremacy. I got gotcha. you. Geneticists are alarmed that white nationalists who are now using milk emojis and sharing photos of themselves chugging milk to celebrate their whiteness. What if you like chocolate milk? Probably. I love chocolate milk. I bet Peter would find a way to be against that too, but that yeah. is a great, that's a great question. I yeah. want to know the answer to it. Well, we need to ask Peter to write an article. It's so probably all... racist. You're probably like stealing that. I'm from trying the black to get community. invited to the barbecue <laughs> is what's happening. Are contorting science and using it as an excuse to hate. In a recent article in the New York Times, evolutionary biologists state that because of a genetic mutation among Europeans, white people are more likely to be able to digest lactose. White nationalists are arguing that being able to drink another animal's breast milk somehow indicates they are of a master race. Good grief, says Zachary. Of course, it was found that, gen that the genetic mutation that allows some humans to digest milk also occurs in black African cattle farmers. That should make racists think twice. Should think twice about that. <laughs> All we can say is this. Human supremacists need to start thinking about other species' interests and in not being exploited. Yeah, the genetic mutation, like, basically the way to break down milk is you, your body has these enzymes to be able to, there's a specific protein in milk that your body needs to be able to break down in order to not make you feel like garbage. Now, for most people, e for most people even, drinking milk still upsets your stomach because for your body to break down that specific milk protein in cow that's found in cow's milk is very difficult. You have to have these enzymes that break down the structure of that protein because it's not natural for your body to consume a, another animal's milk. It but, is kind of, it's kind of weird when you think about it. But over time, right? I would say it's racist. Over time, you're, you know, people do evolve or adapt uh, to produce more of these enzymes to make it easier. But you ask most people when they eat dairy, you usually feel like crap afterwards. Now, some people. I feel awesome. I feel strong. I feel supreme. You really? Yeah. Better than all the other races. That's probably mm -hmm. the part Asian in you. Oh, that yeah. Helps you break it down. Yeah, I just can't do alcohol. Mm. That's, yeah, that's right. Because you don't have the enzymes for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to break down the alcohol. It's a real thing. It's called Asian flesh. Proteins. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> anyway, the point is, is that uh, it doesn't matter who drinks white or chocolate milk. Some people like strawberry milk. And my, what does that my make wife them? love strawberry milk. That's disgusting. You know where you know the best place to keep strawberry milk? Where? The trash can. <laughs> yeah. Don't even put it on the shelf. Yeah. So I am I am uh, questioning this whole chocolate milk thing though, whether or not that would be racist. Mm. But I don't know. We'll see. Okay, that's number nine. Okay, Nina Turner, she says workers are entitled to the fruits of their labor. Uh, good morning, Liberty at Good AM Liberty yeah. on X. Those guys. Says, so you're against taxation? Because she said workers are entitled to the fruits of their labor. Uh -huh. I happen to agree with her. And then this person, Jean-Luc, says... Jean? <laughs> Jean-Luc? Says uh, money isn't the fruits of our labor. Then what is, Jean? What would be the fruit? Uh, as the conversation goes on, what you will find is that what he means are the products that people are making when they are at work. That that is the fruit of your labor. So they should get paid in products. Exactly. <laughs> And so exactly because we're talking about UAW <laughs> yeah. here and we're talking about the cars that people So if are you making. make passenger side doors, <laughs> you should be sent home with passenger side doors, a percentage of so them. many passenger side doors. <laughs> yeah. And then and you try to sell them. <laughs> you go, you no, you don't money. sell them. You carry oh, you the passenger <laughs> side door to yeah. a farmer. Yeah. Okay. And you say, Hey, <laughs> this is a nice looking corn stock you got right there, <laughs> man. I don't mind me saying. Be a shame if you needed a passenger <laughs> yeah. side front yeah. door. Let me ask you something. How many passenger side doors for a yeah. uh, 2024 <laughs> GMC, whatever? Yukon Denali. <laughs> you got. Yeah. 
as and, much uh, as a high end. The farmer is like, uh, well, sir, as a matter of fact, I tend to have about 800 too many corn stalks right here. And what I'd like to have is a passenger side door. So he gets the... Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the guy with the door gets the corn stalks. Can okay. you send Billy over with the bumpers? Yeah. Yeah. He's still working in bumpers, right? <laughs> so the farmer gets the and Who's that guy that puts door. it all together? Because I don't know how to do yeah. that. The farmer. God, these guys are stupid. Farmer falls off the combine one day, okay, which he had to use a lot of passenger side doors to get. <laughs> all right. We don't have to go through that entire yeah. transaction history, mm -hmm. but it took a while. He falls off the combine. He needs to go to the doctor. Yeah. And you know what he notices as he's walking in the building, but the the doctor's car that's missing a passenger side door. <laughs> Which works out perfectly for him. Yes, it yeah. works out well, so he didn't, good. He didn't walk in because he was hurt. True. You know. <laughs> money yeah. as <laughs> money is a medium you imagine, of exchange. Imagine finding all the nuts and bolts guys. You know, all the different oh, yeah. all the different nuts and bolts yeah. that people it's make. It's like someone trying to pay in pennies, but instead they have nuts Ex and bolts. Exactly. The, he's like, with a passenger side door, does that bolt work there <laughs> yeah exactly I got, a, I got a door but the, the bolt guy didn't come by the other day okay oh, god and so what we do instead is we use money <laughs> as a medium of exchange so you made this okay well we're gonna give you money and in fact when you're working for a business who has all the capital to get all these things and put it together and even pay you even if they're losing money like tesla did for a long time what you do is the fruits of your labor is the money that you agreed to work for. Because when you went to this person, you said, hey, I would like to work. In exchange for my work, you're going to give me money. I don't want passenger side doors, Elon. They're too heavy mm -hmm. on the Tesla. All right. What I want is just some money. Let's just work this out. And then I'll go and buy stuff at the store. You know? And, and imagine. That. So imagine if you really did have to take the pr exchange products like that. Mm -hmm. No one would be making any of the big stuff. No, you, you, you it's would, too heavy. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it wouldn't matter if they paid you a million front doors for every front door that you made, which would be impossible. But it wouldn't matter if they even offered you that. But the perfect... Because I would be wanting to work, you know, like in the feather business. <laughs> you know, I'd be, Much easier. I'd be one of... I'd you be make pillows. To make, yeah, like the MyPillow guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the most comfortable... Terrible pillow there is out there. I don't know. <laughs> I've how never that, used it. Are they good? Somebody had one one time. It's awful. Oh. Yeah. Heard they're racist. It, it, don't trust democracy. I laid down on it and instantly yeah. I started hating so black felt people. You had racist thoughts <laughs> entering in the <laughs> back of your head. Just like a yeah. connection. I don't want those. But I need okay. somebody wanted to trade that pillow for something. Like I had something that, <laughs> that, and I was like, well, let me try it. And then I tried to trade for something I needed. It didn't work out. Long story short, long story short, we use money. Now, here's the problem with this money thing. The government issues the currency, and they typically like to devalue your currency as more and more time goes on. Using money is the way that it should be done. It is bartering, only we use, uh, we use pieces of paper as representations of the things that we created. All right? And so that's what you're getting when you're at a job. So Which yes, makes money, it a fruit. So money is the fruit of your labor because that's what you agreed to work for. And Nina says that you're entitled to the fruits of her labor. Nina is against taxation. Boom. And New Prague. This is number eight? Yeah, this okay. is number eight. New Prague, this is a school district in, I'm going to say Minnesota. I think it's Minnesota. Pretty sure. Uh, there's a staff training video. And yes, it does depict white people technically as mosquitoes. It's talking about microaggressions, Charlie. Microaggressions. Do you remember what those are? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, let me find where this actual video is. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Where'd it go? Wait the video. Wait one. Everyone, hold on to your butts. Oh, okay. It's on the DeSantis thing. There we go. Found it. Okay, here's a video that is training staff on how to deal with microaggressions from people and of course it's just white people saying a bunch of dumb stuff to people of color and let's see how dumb all the things are for people who still don't think that microaggressions are a problem oh you're so well spoken oh. just imagine instead of being a stupid comment a microaggression is a mosquito bite Ugh, it's a compliment <laughs> Mosquito bites and their itch are one of nature's most annoying features. But if you're only bitten every once in a while... No, where are you really I, from? I have to first off say this. The first one 
now they're they're basically showing people asking a bunch of dumb questions like they're they're dumb questions so you mm. don't you don't ask people what's wrong with telling okay. someone that you're well spoken well if you if a white person says it to a black person that means that typically black people aren't well spoken i know a lot of people you know, who aren't well spoken and they look what's, they're all kinds of colors what's funny is uh one of the best examples of this is when Joe Biden described Barack Obama as clean, articulate, and bright. Mm. You know, yeah, I believe those are the words he used. And he's just just as uh, bright and <laughs> just and talented and as yeah. talented as, as as Biden's Brit- kids. Yeah, it's Biden's. Yeah. <laughs> Brown. Uh, Cleveland? Sure, it's annoying, but it's not that big a deal. The problem is that some people get bitten by mosquitoes a lot more than other people. I mean, a lot more. Whether it's on a date. Oh, your English is so good. Excuse me? Going grocery shopping. You know, everything happens oh, for a reason. Oh, your English is so good. <laughs> Commuting to work. So when are you going to have a baby? Watching TV. We have to keep the Redskins name. It's part of our culture and history. One Going grocery bad, shopping. One of the bad <laughs> things Hang here on. is... What? Go. <laughs> the Redskins. Yeah. The, did you know that they're actually suing the Washington football team right now? Who is the re- the the chief? Oh yeah, yeah. Because for what? They, because I they were getting paid for that logo. I'm pretty sure. Uh, the chief, like the person who represented, yeah, what everyone who looked tribe. like that or what? Yeah. I don't know about that. I, I saw need, this. I need to I'll see look that. It up. I need to see it. Uh, here's one that I thought was just really dumb. Someone said there's a guy in a wheelchair. Okay. Guy in a wheelchair. And this person who is a mosquito says everything happens for a reason. So you see a guy in a wheelchair. Okay. And you want to say something like, well, you know, everything happens for a reason. That's a microaggression that makes you like a mosquito biting someone. Now I, I happen to think that that's not one of the terrible things to say to someone in the video. Is it a true story? It is true. true. Is it really four days ago? North Dakota Native Americans sue Washington commanders after call for Redskins nickname return. <laughs> All right, I'll have to look at that story sometime. You can't sometime. this stuff up, That's man. Great. I'm telling you. I like it. It's so good. Okay, let's get through this v- video. You know, everything happens for a reason. I'm just buying apples. Commuting to work. So when are you going to have a baby? Watching TV. We have to keep the Redskins name. It's part of our culture and history. Or just walking down the street with your partner. I couldn't even tell you were gay. <sighs> Mosquitoes seem to pop up everywhere. Do you know John? Give me shopping advice. So I know Cher too. And getting bit by mosquitoes every goddamn day. Can I touch your oh, yeah, hair? Multiple words times a day. So pretty. Can, can I touch your hair? Yeah. Your mouth. Can I please? It's fucking oh, annoying. That makes you want to go ballistic on those mosquitoes, which seems like a huge overreaction to people who only get bit every once in a while. It's just a mosquito bite. Who cares? Just another angry black woman. Of course, beyond just being annoying, some mosquitoes carry truly threatening diseases that can mess up your life for years. Astrophysics? Hmm, maybe you should try less challenging, Major. Ow, what a dream. Now, one of the microaggressions there was telling a kid, like, not to go for astrophysics, okay? Because you go for something less challenging. What I want to see is someone come up, the mosquito bites and says, hey, you're black, you're never going to make it anywhere in life unless you live off the backs of other people. (laughs) How about that one? Is that one in the video? Yeah. Okay, it's not. It's Mm -hmm. not going to be in there, is it? And other mosquitoes carry strains that can even kill you. It looked like he was up to trouble, okay? I felt threatened. So next time you think someone's overreacting, just remember, some people experience mosquito bites all the time. You're all so exotic, wow. And by mosquito bites, we mean microaggressions. I just, oh man, can I complain about hating complaining? (laughs) That's actually where I was going to go with it, so yeah. I'm just so tired of it. Yeah. I'm just so, like, I, I'm always reminded that we just live in such a wonderful society. Like, it's just the miracle that surrounds us that videos like this can exist. Mm. You know? That that somebody has time to put something as stupid as this together. Yeah. And then put it on the mm. internet. Like, that's how good life is right now. When it comes to microaggressions, like you said, first off, gratitude for where we are. In life. Second, get the F over it. Right. Someone asks you a question that you didn't like. You think you're the only person that's ever been asked a question that they didn't like before? No. Well, how many times have you been bitten though, Nate? Come on. (laughs) You get bitten by mosquitoes all the time, man. Mm. Okay. Um, I I agree, Magoo. This video is worse than a mosquito bite. In fact, I've just aggressed on all of you by playing it (laughs) and making you watch it in the live group right now.
But this no, might be a worse video than than the vaccination Barbie. You know, <laughs> video. You know how you can defend a mosquito bite, Charlie? You develop tougher skin. Oh, that was good. That's You've pretty been good. About huh? that all day. No, huh? no, I ju- that just came up oh, right then, just now. Yeah. Wow, that was quick. But no, seriously, yeah. get over it, okay? Mm-hmm. And a lot of the things they show were I mean, they were dumb questions. Listen, we all know not to ask a woman how far along she is. Okay. <laughs> Everyone knows not to or, do that, but that was one pregnant. of them. Yeah, yeah. Or she's pregnant. Yeah. Exactly. Or if she plans on having kids, mm-hmm. you know, also, I don't, I just don't understand, you know, why people like you, you, you take things so personally, you know, I, I just don't get it. Like what, why is it so bad? I mean, I guess I understand, but why is it so bad to ask a woman Who's capable of having kids? <laughs> like, hey, do you plan on having kids? I get when people are like, why don't you have kids yet? Or whatever. And you're like, well, I don't want kids or whatever, you know. But if you ask the question, like, hey, do you plan on having them? It, what's, what's so wrong with that? Ladies, help me out in the live group. Uh, maybe I'm ignorant and I don't understand how many mosquito bites you actually get. <laughs> so many, know? man. But hey, I got the off. <laughs> You get, why are you itching or something? Got a <laughs> oh, whole van that, full off. That was actually the last dumb bleep. Yeah. Which is good because it's uh, it's five after five right now. 